please, please, please research in clomiphene and clomid in depth because the side effects of at least clomid are well established. So long story short, uh, clotting risk, right? Um, uh, very problematic nowadays. Redu reduction in IGF-1 levels, so that makes you less anabolic when you take a selective androgen receptor modulators. And everything else, when you really do the reading and the digging through the scientific literature, I mean, you can basically piece it all together in a day. <laughs> of all of the SARMs, that's what I did. I went through all of the scientific literature of all the selective androgen receptor modulators which potentiate effect through the androgen receptor in a day. I mean, that's kind of sad, right? I mean, try to do that for Trembolone or Mastrone or Anivar or a Prima Ball and Testosterone and Androne line, which, which have a boatload of scientific evidence behind it that you can make um, informed decisions with. So the, basically the consensus is that all SARMs at uh, single milligram dosages or higher um, potentiate side effects. And you can see this in humans because humans usually take five milligrams of a selective androgen receptor modulator of choice or more, right? Could be five milligrams, 10 milligrams, 20 milligrams, 25 milligrams, 30 milligrams. Some people even take 50 milligrams per day, which I think is stupid. Uh, but right, there's these token outliers out there. So the commonly occurring side effects of SARMs are acne, hair loss, lethargy, jaundice, gynecomastia, impaired libido, ocular changes, testicular atrophy, high blood pressure, subfertility or complete infertility, headaches or migraines, impaired hypothalamic pituitary testes axis functioning, depression or poor mental health, lower back pumps or lower back pain. And many of these are actually proven in the various animal models performed on certain SARMs. So you see that uh, libido issues occur in animal models and ocular changes occur in animal models. Testicular atrophy occurs, right? subfertility or infertility, impaired HPTA function, and uh, changes to lipid parameters. So on the subject of that, so let's just uh, go over the commonly occurring blood work changes on SARM-only ch cycles, which is what I've seen, um, you know, analyzing blood work results of uh, men, usually in their teens or early 20s, that uh, stupidly do a SARM-only cycle. Long story short, pulling all of that data together from the multitude of blood work results that I've seen and then scouring through Reddit to kind of confirm that, right, which is where all the SARM goblins are kind of hanging out nowadays. Reddit, so those are skewed lipid parameters, low HDL, high LDL, elevated total cholesterol, and skewed triglyceride levels, skewed liver parameters with elevated liver enzymes, ALT and AST, and sometimes even low alkaline phosphatase, which could be related to the bone mineralization effects or a zinc deficiency, a skewed kidney parameters, elevated creatinine, blood urea nitrogen, uric acid, creatine phosphokinase levels, bottom sexual mobility globulin levels into the single digits. But I thought, Steve, I thought that selective androgen receptor modulators only bind to the androgen receptor. Well, based on all the uh, clinical data that I've researched and all of the blood work that I've seen, SARMs also bind to the SHPG. Bottom sex hormones, low total testosterone, moderate free and bioavailable testosterone, probably because SHPG is so low, and low estradiol levels as a direct result of an impaired or non-functioning HPTA. Again, bottomed out pituitary hormones, undetectable luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. But weirdly, in a lot of blood work that I've seen, uh, complete blood count, iron and ferritin levels are completely normal. Most of these commonly occurring side effects and blood work changes very similar to anabolic androgenic steroids, right? Besides that, anabolic androgenic steroids might also increase your complete blood count parameters, right? raising red blood cell counts, lowering white blood cell count, increasing your hematocrit and hemoglobin, and potentially your iron and ferritin levels by increasing iron cycling and potentially iron absorption. I mean, this is what you can expect if you do a serum only cycle, but there's some ways around it because testosterone and estrogen, bioidentical hormones actually help to regulate your blood pressure and improve some of these uh, commonly occurring side effects that uh, might be otherwise associated with the SARMs only cycle. So to sustain our sex hormone levels, we could take human chorionic gonadotropin, 250 IOS to 500 IOS three times weekly, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But you have to inject. Right? So that's off the table, right? I'm completely sympathetic to your oral only cycle, right? You have to inject, it's scary. You have to bring those insulin syringes with you. You still live at home because you're young and now your parents might find out that you have some injection material, some insulin syringes in your bedroom or you live at a dormitory and your roommate 
is completely against injections maybe they might even faint if they see you inject or you live with your girlfriend and she doesn't know right you haven't been truthful you haven't been honest because you don't really trust your girlfriend she might rat you out to the police if you have some injection material at home right and you decided to go with selective antigen receptor modulators to kind of bas bypass that effect but you still have to inject human chorionic gonadotropin so that's off the table okay in clomiphene or clomid is maybe, 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 maybe a way to go. 25 milligrams before bed to block the estrogen receptors, which is non-existent in this context, right? If you take selective androgen receptor modulators, your testosterone levels come down and your estrogen come down, then yeah, technically you don't have any negative feedback through the estrogen receptors on hypothalamic and pituitary functioning and thus luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormones should stay somewhat in range, albeit in scientific literature isn't really there, uh, unlike the case with Anivar, which actually has been shown in a couple different uh, contexts, that uh, moderate doses of Anivar for longer periods of time can actually have a sustained luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone level in serum, in human subjects. But hold your horses, that doesn't make it okay to do an Anivar-only cycle, please. Okay, so technically you would assume that luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone would stay somewhat intact, <laughs> but not from the blood work that I've seen. LH and FSH bottomed out, so you need to block the estrogen receptor. Um, you might still get some uh, down-regulatory effect through the androgen receptor when you take SARMs, but then clomiphene or clomid might be a sustainable solution to uh, bring your luteinizing hormone, follicle-stimulating hormone, and thus testosterone and estrogen levels up somewhat. Please, please, please research in clomiphene and clomid in depth because the side effects of uh, at least clomid are well-established. So long story short, uh, clotting risk, right? Um, uh, very problematic nowadays. Redu reduction in IGF-1 levels, so that makes you less anabolic when you take a selective androgen receptor modulators. Uh, um, even if you combine a selective androgen receptor modulators with MK677, which would otherwise raise growth hormone and IGF-1 levels, you take some clomid or in clomiphene, um, you might have more IGF-1 than naturally, but less than you could potentially have. And then there's a boatload of other side effects related to selective estrogen receptor modulators. So please, research. And then again, there's always testosterone replacement therapy, right? 50 milligrams three times per week or 25 milligrams daily. So that's a weekly dose of 150 milligrams to 175 milligrams total. Um, but then you're going to have to inject. And how are you going to explain that to your parents or your roommates or to the girlfriend that you don't really trust? Uh, just to be 100% clear, if you go on the SARMs only cycle, it doesn't matter which over-the-counter test booster you take, that could potentially increase luteinizing hormone levels uh, proven in animal models or have a somewhat positive effect on testicular function. Not going to work in any way, shape or form. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it, you take a little bit of SARMs, doesn't matter how potent your over-the-counter test booster is, it's not going to sustain testicular function, trust me. Okay, so this is how to improve your uh, sex hormone levels when you do a serum only cycle. Basically, the only option that you have is inclomiphene or clomid, which I'm also against for long-term exposure. But, right, you're already getting your hands dirty. Serums are inherently unhealthy. Um, it's up to you to add another compound in there, which is going to make you even more unhealthy, I would say. And we can, uh, you know, maybe mitigate some of that by taking some over-the-counter supplements to improve our lipid parameters. A healthy diet filled with uh, mono and polo unsaturated fats, omega-3 rich uh, fat sources, and uh, some soluble and insoluble fiber sources as well to kind of balance out our total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and triglyceride levels. And beyond that, you can look into omega-3 fatty acids, berberine, citrus bergamot, and uh, if you can't uh, get it done with that, or the dose of your SARMs is so high that your lipids are still um, Zetamipe, 10 milligrams upon waking, very good for that purpose. There's also red yeast rice, which is a natural statin. And then, uh, you know, to further enhance that or uh, things to look into, psyllium husk, fiber, niacin, garlic extract, alpha-lopoic acid. And if you're really messed up, well, there's always statins and PKS9 <laughs> inhibitors. What can we do to improve our kidney parameters when we're taking SARMs? You know, just check your cystat and see. It's very likely those kidney parameters are still good, right? Creatinine is going to be high when you take steroids. Same for uric acid, potentially, if you're dehydrated or you sweat a lot. Um, creatine phosphokinase is going to be elevated because you train hard. 
a blood to nitrogen is going to be elevated because you eat a boatload of protein. So I feel that hydration is, in many cases, whether you take steroids or selective androgen receptor modulators, is more than enough. Personally, I recommend more than four liters per day, uh, but it's entirely up to you how much water you need to drink before you consider yourself hydrated. Uh, balanced electrolyte intake, also very important. I have videos on that. And then um, the only real compound that is known to improve kidney parameters is astragalus root extract. And it could be anywhere between 500 milligrams to 3,000 milligrams in the morning and evening. Uh, you can look at the kidney stuff, acacia gum fibers, chitosan, right? Might all have some uh, marginal positive effect on kidney function. But I would say that hydration and electrolyte intake um, is your best bet besides astragalus root extract. Then to improve our uh, liver parameters, which of course, selective androgen receptor modulators or oral compounds, they go through the intestinal tract, they have two passes through the liver and thus liver enzymes go up. Again, a healthy diet contributes to a, a healthy liver. Caffeine might help uh, contribute to a healthy liver. So enjoy your coffee and shut the f up. Carnitine helps with liver health, whether that's oral L-carnitine, L-tartrate or injectable L-carnitine. Vitamin E, the mix tocopherols and tocotrienols help with liver health. And then there's tyro urso deoxycholic acid, abbreviated to TUTCA. Could be anywhere between 250 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams per day, depending on the total amount of SARMs and uh, potentially clomiphene and clomiphene that you're taking orally, right? So, so far, everything is oral only besides the injectable L-carnitine, um, which, of course, you're going to forego for L-carnitine, L-tartrate. And then look into n cysteine which helps with glutathione production in the liver and systemically as well. Besides that, there's always uh, milk twistle extract, also known as silymarin or ox bile, or uh, maybe even Himalaya liver 52 double strength, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All have uh, potential but marginal effects on your liver health. And then um, to combat the systemic inflammation that you might get from your oral SARMs, suspended in polyethylene glycol or monoethylene glycol or propylene glycol, right? Whatever synthetic solvent they use nowadays, in many cases, it causes systemic inflammation. You would want to avoid that. If you must, and this video doesn't turn you off yet, if you absolutely must take SARMs, take them in capsule form and avoid the ones that are suspended in liquid. So if it comes in a dropper, you get your 30 milliliters with 30 milligrams per one milliliter. Osterine is probably in a synthetic solvent. You can taste it as it's going down and it, it probably burns more in your esophagus than a proper shot of vodka or whiskey. So uh, still, if you're going with the synthetic solvent stuff, uh, turmeric extract, right? Curcumin, a curcumin C3 complex, 500 milligrams before bed or 500 milligrams twice per day. Boswellia serrata extract might help uh, to a certain extent to lower systemic inflammation, but it mostly works in the connective tissue. So if the SARMs are making you strong and they are making you slightly inflamed, then the Boswellia serrata extract might be able to offset that. And even boron, three milligrams once or twice per day, is known to reduce systemic inflammation. And, uh, you know, besides that, you can look into adoptogens and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. I don't think that's very sustainable, certainly not for your kidney health. And uh, cold plunges, right? Uh, cold plunges are free. You don't have to inject anything. You just dip into the pool and get your systemic inflammation down. Three minutes, four minutes. Real men do, uh, you know, five minutes or longer. Um, but if you're just trying to get your hands dirty with SARMs and you can't really stand cold plunges, two minutes is better than nothing. This is all the advice I can give you. This is it. This is it. Besides that you need to do your research. And again, if I can piece it together in one day, then why can't many of the SARMs only guys do that? It's not difficult to do your blood work. It's not difficult to check your health parameters. And it's not difficult to do research to make yourself understand why SARMs only cycles are a bad idea, right? Long story short, none of them are clinically approved. All of them besides maybe S40503 are not selective <laughs> in the dosages that you take for fitness or bodybuilding aspirations, right? You're taking five milligrams to 30 milligrams, let's say, but they're only selective in 0 0.1, 0 0.5, one milligram dosages. And even if you go over one milligram dosages, the negative effect on blood work parameters and overall health uh, metrics are very, very tangible, all right? So so keep that in mind, guys. It's um, I would go with anabolic androgenic steroids, which have a laundry list of scientific evidence behind it, and we know how the human body is going to react and how to mitigate side effects. Uh, but I also understand that anabolic androgenic steroids have been classified as a drug for, for much longer, so it might be more difficult to source. And 
unfortunately, in this day and age, right, you can basically buy SARMs uh, everywhere on gray area websites. I think it's easier to get SARMs delivered to your house than it is to get the wheat delivered to your house in the United States, Holland, or Thailand, which is saying, <laughs> which is saying a lot. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll leave it here. Food for thought. I don't want to make this video too long because, well, let's be honest, Serms only guys have limited attention spans. Um, so uh, I hate to say it, but again, as a clarification, I still firmly believe that Serms are for quitters and for losers. Real men take steroids and do the research on how to use steroids safely. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with besides SARM sources because I don't endorse SARMs, so I don't have discount codes for SARMs. Sorry, not sorry. You can find all of my affiliates and sponsors down below. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. Endogenous testosterone production from exogenous human chorionic gonadotropin. I mean, I still look pretty good. I mean, I didn't need SARMs to get the job done. I used Austrian and I felt horrible. And my squat actually went down from three plates to two plates. Why? <laughs> Who knows? I will never touch SARMs again. Peace out.